Live from New York, it's theCUBE. Covering Big Data New York City 2016. Brought to you by headline sponsors, Cisco, IBM, NVIDIA, and our ecosystem sponsors. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. Welcome back to New York City, Big Data NYC. This is theCUBE, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. We run Big Data NYC concurrent with O'Reilly, Strata, and Hadoop. We've been doing Hadoop World since 2010, this is our seventh year. Dave Klumpkin is here, he's the Director of Worldwide Sales and Manager of Big Data at Cisco, and he's joined by Rex Backman, who is a Lead Senior Solutions Marketing Manager for Big Data at Cisco. Gents, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, Thank you to be here. We're going to talk voice of the customer, we're going to talk a little baseball, we're going to talk big data. <laughs> you so got it, you What's got happening? It. You were talking <laughs> off camera, Moneyball got us all started. Yeah, right? you know, we're, Dave and I were talking about it, Dave and I have worked together for the past couple of years. Uh, we're both baseball fans. My team's the San Francisco Giants. Your team is? The Chicago Cubs. So we're Is this the year? Yeah, <laughs> we're, 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 we kind of go back and we're forth. <laughs> and uh, you know, we're, we're, we're looking at you know, customer trends and, and the adoption of big data, the adoption of analytics, the growth of data and customer sites. And you know, we were thinking that you know, really the, the, the commercial birth of big data or the democratization of big data was really like when Michael Lewis's book Moneyball came out and then the movie, because people started to say, oh, it's, it's all about data, it's about an, uh, you know, analytics and analysis to drive business results, and you know, the results for the Oakland A's were, were pretty good. So, you know, big data and Moneyball and baseball, we, we talk about that. So, how, how are your Cubs going to end up this year, Dave? So, we won the last World Series in 1908, and um, we have a curse on us, but we won 100 games this year, and I was telling Rex that, there's 22 teams that have won 100 games uh, in baseball, and only two of them have won the World Series, so it's got me a little bit nervous. <laughs> well, so, you know, Moneyball is an interesting topic, right? Because I remember when that book came out, I said, why is Billy Bean spilling the beans right. like this, you know? Yeah. But now, having said that, he, and, and I'm a Red Sox fan, so the Red Sox sort of did the Moneyball thing right, for right. a while, and then they sort of lost the formula, but Theo Epstein is living yeah. that, I presume, still with the Cubs, and I'm following that closely, yeah. but it works. So. Does that translate into big data? You know, again, you guys are Well, the cool thing is it's, it's what's, the, what's the analytics that nobody else is watching, right? That's the whole money ball theme. Everybody was watching A, but really the value is in these other analytics that nobody ever put together. So yep. what is the equivalent, you know, where people are shifting their focus on the things that they ne either couldn't, couldn't analyze, uh, just missed, uh, where now they're yep. seeing some great new value and opportunities? There, there's such a proliferation of data out there, I mean, it's it's just incredible how much data is being um, is being collected now. And they said, uh, I was at a uh, meeting yesterday, and they said 90% of the data has been collected in the last two years, but only 1% of it's being analyzed. So the companies that can analyze that data and kind of get some competitive advantage out of it are the ones that are going to be successful. They're the ones that aren't going to become dinosaurs. They're going to become the ones that continue to grow and, and prosper. Right. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's kind of interesting. You know, you know, Dave just mentioned dinosaurs. Um, we hear that at Cisco a lot through our leadership team in terms of, you know, at the higher level, it's, you know, the digital transformation and it's, you know, digitize or die. You know, it's kind of a, you know, a scary thing, but what we see is, you know, customers that are adopting you know, the acquisition of their data streams and then utilizing that, storing that, analyzing that to find business value, business trends to improve customer service, improve profitability, finding, you know, competitive angles that they haven't seen before. One of our, uh, you know, one of the customer case studies that we've worked on recently is out of Australia, a company called Quantium. Um, they themselves are an analytics firm. They, their service that they sell is analytics and they were struggling like a lot of our customers are. You know, the, the growth of data is just very, very difficult and they were using um, a proprietary database uh, from one of the leading database vendors. It just wasn't keeping up with them uh, and they were looking at uh, more flexible, scalable solutions and to your comment on, you know, hey, Billy Bean kind of opened it up and open sourced it. You know, we at Cisco are kind of, you know, we're all about choice and Quantum, looked at particular configurations and now they've got a really good standardized data center that's based on you know, some good Cisco technology, but aside from that, the value that they get is true scalability. They're, 
their, their data is just exploding, you know, 10 times a year. And then the benefit they've received in terms of better service to their customers is they've seen like 90% performance improvement even as their data scales. So that's an example of a company that gets it, um, is taking the data and their analysis of the data to their competitive advantage or for their competitive advantage. So what's Cisco's play here in, in big data? Can you describe that for us a little bit? I mean, just... Uh, I'll go. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. And he'll follow on. Yeah. He'll, he'll be the relief pitcher, yeah. so to speak, to keep, <laughs> keep the analogy going. You know, our team is, is primarily, if you look at it, you know, we'll start off on the infrastructure side uh, within the data center. Um, so our, our Cisco UCS compute platform, very, very, you know, really uh, innovative fabric-based computing platform. And then it provides you know, the, the hardware scalability, the network scalability, the storage scalability, performance, that we then work with you know, the leading big data providers on the Hadoop side, so a Cloudera, a Hortonworks, an IBM, a MapR, and we work together to create validated and tested and supported uh, reference architectures with them. Uh, and those are then sold worldwide uh, to commercial enterprises, uh, enterprises, governments, education, uh, and then we might want to talk about some of the analytics that we've got going as yeah. well. Yeah, the other thing I would say about that is when you, when you look at that, um, big data is changing kind of from a techie topic to a business topic, yep. right? Customers are looking for SLAs. Um, customers are looking for enterprise class solutions, ones that have high performance, ones that are scalable, and that's really what um, Cisco d delivers with our, our pre-validated and tested designs. I mean, we've tested those. We actually have um, you know, customer, one customer that has 3,000 uh, Hadoop servers. Mm -hmm. So just think about you know, the complexity of managing that and, and installing that, and, and that's really what we do. We help customers you know, with speed to market on, on those types of uh, okay, solutions. Okay, so it's, it's for, that's all about infrastructure simplification so I can shift my resources from IT labor and patching and all these mundane tasks that don't add value to my business to driving value right. through analytics, right? I yep. mean, and so, where, how does that work in your customer base? So you got infrastructure pros that are used to you know, deploying compute or, or, or networking, and then you're freeing their time. Are they being retrained? Um, are they just sort of DevOps guys that know how to you know, do things in development? And how are they adding value once, the, once that infrastructure problem is solved and you're taking that IT labor, you know, reducing the IT labor complexity. What do they do next? So, um, what, what I would say is, you know, I mean, our, our focus is um, not to look at it as a silo. So we look at, you know, if you're going to be successful in a big data project, it's IT, it's your data scientist, mm -hmm. it's your line of business. And so we work with all three of those um, groups together. And um, is what, one of the things I would say is, the workload doesn't necessarily decrease because the, the amount of infrastructure and the amount, the size of the solutions is expanding so rapidly. Data and use cases are expanding so astronomically right now that when we get in with a successful project, we're seeing those projects grow tenfold. We're seeing you know, customers do, you know, implement you know, 10, 15, 30, 50 use cases. And so when you do that, it doesn't necessarily decrease the size of your infrastructure. So we're not seeing our IT folks go away, but they, but they are very important in making sure that you know, it, it runs like an enterprise So because of the growth, system. you still need as many people to manage, the, but you're managing a lot more. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. one of the things we've talked about a lot is, it's funny, data needs to be data exhaust, right? It just goes yep. up the back and yep. you let it go. Now, it's an asset, right? And, and you guys used to be an expense, I had all the data, it's too expensive now, it's mm -hmm. an asset that I can deploy in, in new ways. How's that narrative changing where now it's an investment in the data asset that's supported by infrastructure, not, eh, I got to buy a bunch more infrastructure to hold this stuff, which just used to be just exhaust, I didn't yeah. want to hold it all anyway. I, I, you know, I was talking to a, a leading insurance company here in the States uh, a few weeks ago, and, and, and like baseball, they, they're, they're data driven and everything's a statistic and they have to have the data uh, because that's the lifeblood of their business because the data drives their algorithms for risk, uh, for pricing on policies. They don't throw any data away. 
Um, so as their data grows, it's because their business grows or they get into new use cases or new types of business, maybe going from, from house insurance, home insurance, to auto insurance or to other types of risk. Um, they, they use that data to drive policies, to drive you know, an understanding of what their risk tolerance is. Another example of you know, the data that's growing, and you, know, you were kind of asking, well, what, well, all this data's coming in, what's happening, what new ways are they utilizing data? Quantium in Australia, um, they had a little sideline project around uh, the data that they were capturing and some interest in supporting a, a charity organization around human trafficking. So they used a lot of stats around human trafficking to like deliver some value and some interesting stats and information to the Australian government. So it was really, really pretty interesting what they could do, and that's not their key business, but it's the data that they had. They had the time, because of the productivity, to go work on that as kind of a pro bono kind of big data case. Interesting. We're, we're out of time. Say one other thing. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the reason that those you know, people don't mind investing in those assets is because the line of business is driving that. Right. They're looking for all these different use cases. They're looking to use that data to have a competitive advantage. So you don't get as, you know, as big a concern about like, oh, what's the cost of the infrastructure or the software or the services that support it because the line of business is driving that, you know, that is a key part of their business no, now going forward. It's great because that's what kind of the content, you know, at what point does the data become a balance sheet item? Um, yeah. And so now your infrastructure is really supporting a much higher value item that you know maybe drives a different type of a multiple. So it's a very different conversation. Now I need more infrastructure to support this higher value right. execution versus it's just another you know kind of kind of racks and stacks yeah. and, and yeah. this and that. So exactly. exciting times. It's an, it's an asset, not a liability. Exactly. So we got to go, but uh, I'll give you guys the last word. What's the one thing you want people to know about Cisco and big data customers that they may so, not know? So I, I would say um, one thing: customers are um, need to um, con need to consume and store vast, huge quantities of data. They have to they have to store it somewhere, right? And they have to you know, and they need processing power to analyze it. Cisco offers an enterprise class with high performance, huge scalability solutions uh, that are um, specifically tailored to big data, and. Um, you know, our business has grown from almost nothing in three years to the, probably one of our largest workloads right now in big data and analytics. So it's, it's, um, it's really grown, you know, based on that strategy. Great. So. Very true. Nice TAM expansion for when Cisco got into the server business, I didn't really understand it. And, but it really didn't get into the server business. It changed the game with right. convergence. And uh, it's been incredibly successful. So congratulations. Thank really you. appreciate you guys Great. coming on theCUBE. Thank you for having us. You're Thank welcome. You. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest right after this short break. This is theCUBE. We're live from New York City. We'll be right back.